So negotiation, right? Finding deals, how to negotiate deals. These are all things that you know people wonder about before they get started, it seems so. How do you find out? Anyway, so here are three what, psychological, I like to call them psychological tactics that you can use to negotiate a deal to your advantage. And I'll jump right into it. Uh, the first one, and I've talked about this a little bit before in a different context, but unlocking, let's say it's a real estate deal, unlocking the seller's real motivation. Now, if it's a situation where, and again, this is not Sunday school, this is not kumbaya, this is business. So if you're in a situation where you can somehow figure out what the real motivation is, let's say it's a divorce. On the other side, it's emotionally charged. There's, um, there's an incentive to get the thing resolved quickly. The objective with the sale is not necessarily to make a profit. It's just to get two people that no longer want to be together away from each other as quickly as possible and get the deal wrapped up. And in those times where the objective isn't necessarily to make a profit, it's just to get the hell out of the way, that's when you can get a real deal. So unlocking the seller's motivation and then crafting an offer according to that. And you may ask me, well, how do I do that? So uh, an obvious example would be to offer quick close, right? Say, okay, we can get this done quickly. I'm a solid buyer. Making sure that you show that you're a good one to go with and you can get a better deal, probably less than what the amount is. So that's number one. Uh, number two, sometimes it actually makes sense to look into the agent's motivation. So again, the agent is the one talking and their incentive is always to find the best deal for them. So sometimes it might make sense to figure out what the whole, again, you figure out the seller's motivation, but if you figure out the agent's motivation, you can find a way to make that work for you. A way that I've done this before wasn't necessarily a, a situation where there were multiple bids because me personally, if I'm in a situation like that, I'm not gonna participate. I'm just not gonna participate. But nine times out of 10 anyway. So the way that I did that was that I offered a deal where I bid less than the asking price. And I did this for a very particular reason. I didn't really want them to take that deal, but I offered it cash, right? So I took a low deal cash so they would consider it because there's an incentive there. I'll get to that in a second. And then I offered another one which was at the valuation of ask, but to buy a portion of the property, a joint venture. Now, in, then, you, then you gotta think to yourself, that means for an agent, that means less money. It's like, wait a minute, let's just throw out numbers. The asking price is a million dollars, but I'm only coming with, let's say 500,000. They would be inclined naturally to say no to the one that's 500,000. So what I did was I said, look, I know what the, the agent's motivation is. He needs to get his commission. So I said, let's close this deal. You're still gonna get the same amount you'd, you would have gotten had it been a full ask. You're gonna get paid the same. Now there's actually an incentive to get a deal done and he will work for you as he's working for the seller because his incentive is to get paid. Make sense? So. Unlocking their motivation, which is obvious, is they want to get paid, but there's other ways, other nuances sometimes where you can unlock that person's motivation and figure out how to craft a deal around that. Now, uh, the final one is tap into the psychology of instant gratification. So it's something we know as children and something that doesn't really ever leave us. People want things, they want them right now. This is why a lot of times people have a hard time saving or have, the, have a hard time developing the discipline required to invest for the long term. And again, it's, it's instant gratification. So, so how would that work? Again, before I get into it, Muhammad Ali, you guys know Muhammad Ali. One time he had made a deal for his, his penultimate fight. It was, his last big, it was his last big fight before another one. And he was gonna get paid, uh, I forget the exact, exact amount, but let's say $10 million. Then he gets paid $9 million after the fight by the promoter, Don King. And Ali gets mad, so he sues him for a million dollars because he's like, there's a million dollars short, I need my money. So this is what Don King does. They go back and forth with the lawyers. 
Don King knows, and so does Ali, they both know that if this is going to go through the court system, it's going to take forever and ever and ever. So legal fees, this and that, it's just going to be dragged out. So what Don King did was he pulled up with a briefcase with $50,000 in cash. Nothing to account for, no IRS involved, no lawyers, no waiting a year. Here's the cash. And he did that, and Don King made $950,000 because he just paid him $50,000 in cash. Ali said, you know what, to hell with it. Let's get this wrapped up. I'll take the $50,000. Instant gratification. How does this translate to getting a real estate deal? Now, cash offers. Let's go back to the example of uh, unlocking the motivation. Let's say the motivation is a divorce, and the two parties just want to get as far away from each other as humanly possible. They don't want to wait. It's emotionally charged. When you're emotionally charged, people don't make good decisions, okay? So what you can do is to capitalize. And before somebody is saying, well, it's predatory. Well, it's business. Bought a property. You have an asset. You're in the game of liquidating that asset. You stepped into the game. It's like jumping into a fight with a broken hand or with a uh, some sort of ailment. And you don't, you're not expecting the opponent to take advantage of it. If you're bleeding the eye, the, the dude's going to pop you in the eye. Same thing here. So... What you could do, though, I'm not saying bad karma or anything, but this is, this is just how, how things work. You could go in and you could make a cash offer at far less than ask. And because they're just saying, you know what, let's get this done. Let's get this over with. You have a good shot of landing the deal. So those are three um, psychological, if you will, negotiation tactic, tactics that you can use when negotiating, negotiating real estate deals. Any type of deals, really, but using real estate because that's what we're talking about.